Does anybody have any experience with vegetarian or vegan diet doing this? I know I own a book by a man that, but it, it seems like you still have to consume so many more carbs. And I've already burned my pita card. I'm eating chicken, <laughs> but I'm feeling a little guilty, and I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn. That I, you know what I, that I'm not. I can't talk to. Okay, because I yeah. Okay, I actually was a raw foodist for two years, raw vegan, and then I was a vegan for two years. This was actually before I decided to come back to competing. And in the beginning, I thought, oh, well, maybe I can do this. <laughs> it yeah. is really difficult. Yeah. It really, really is difficult to get the right combination of um, macronutrients in order to get the most out of your physique. So I eventually did succumb. And <laughs> yeah. so. Okay, that's so, kind of what I thought. Yeah. This, It'll be my first competition, so I thought I might as well go all the way with <laughs> do, it, right? Do it the right way. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it, yeah, it takes too much work not to. Right? Yeah. With, with any time you're a vegan, the thing is, it's your amino acid profile. And so, because you don't eat complete protein sometimes, you don't get that amino acid profile. So recovery, if you picture your muscle like, like a potato, and each time you train, you shave a layer of that potato, and then the protein comes in and heals where well, you don't get that healing. So then you get atrophy and muscle starts to go backwards and you start to lose the hardness of the muscle. So a lot of times if you're vegan or vegetarian, you tend to get a little bit of that mus muscle atrophy and, and you have to be careful. There are ways around it and you don't have to specifically go back to eating just a certain meat. There are other ways to get your proteins, but your carb sources do tend to be a little bit higher because that's where your, your proteins come from, the carb family. So you do you you need to be really specific to that profi that uh, amino acid profile so make sure you get your you know recovery and you could do that with branched chain amino acids and you know th there's ways to get it in there but if you pay attention to that then you tend to make up that ground Hi, thank you for being here. Um, question around the bikini division and the judging. I know there's two different criterias, but is there a per percentage around appearance and a percentage around your shape? I know you have two different, so I didn't know if it's broken out. No, it's it, no because it's one score and done, and that's why I think bikini a little bit more than the other divisions, where your personality and your presentation p play a lot more into that score. That's why, like sometimes somebody will send me, um, you know, pictures and they'll say, you know. You know, how would I, you know, why did I do this at a show or something? And it's with bikini, I'll be honest with them. I'll, t you know, I'll look at physique wise and tell them what I, I think, you know, where the areas they need to work on or what, what could have, you know, maybe brought them down a little bit. But that, that, that pr stage presence is such a big part of bikini. Um, and that's, which is nice because that allows bikini. If you look up there, there's very, so many different types of body. I mean, if you look at, you know, at, at Natalia at the Olympia, I mean, Natalia is a little bit smaller up top, a little bit heavier in the bottom, you know what I mean? Where Nicole is a little bit more with the V taper, but it allows all those different types of bodies to compete on stage and to do well. And it's that personality factor that tends then to make the little bit of difference, you know what I mean, between the different body types. So I'd probably say it's like 50-50. Not so much at the local, because then I think body's going to play a lot more, because at the local level, at the more regional shows, you're going to see a lot more girls maybe that aren't quite as good shape, and so that's a little bit easier to weed out. But when you get to the best of the best, the difference is just so minute between the competitors that that stage presence, I think, plays a lot, you know, a lot more. Does that help a little bit? OK. So with that um, bikini, the actual bikini that you're wearing, is it distracting to have like chains and because I when I first started looking for a bikini, I was just like so confused, like how ornate to get with a bikini. Oh, do here I we go again. This is my other favorite that thing. Has. And I so I everybody that, that makes in. a suit is going to hate me here. Um, <laughs> Natalia won again a show with one off the rack. If you have a great body, that and the little pizzazz that goes with it, that is what's going to make it. You know, um, I tell everyone, if you have a suit that you got made, and unless the judge comes to you and say, that suit really probably knocked a couple points off you, because it just wasn't, you know, didn't fit your body, I would wear the suit until it falls off your body, okay? Um, you don't need a thousand rhinestones on it. 
You just need one that fits you. Col colors, I think, play a big, a, a big thing. I think, and I've always said this, I think the deeper colors um, on stage look better. You want something that contrasts to your, you know, to your, to your, you know, your own skin tone. Um, but again, I've seen competitors win the Olympia with something that I would have thought would have looked horrible, but the bo it's the body. The body's so good, it didn't matter that the color of the suit wasn't one that I would have, you know, I would have thought she would have done well with. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, I don't think you need all the chains and the rhinestones. I think you just need a good cut, a nice color, and the body to go with it.